I'm gonna start this out a little differently. I am gonna read you guys a story, but I wanna be able to talk about everything. So I wanna, I'm gonna do this backwards. I'm gonna let you hear the response first. What's up everybody? It's your boy Jay Cures, and I hope you're having a great day. Now me, I'm having a wild one. I can't even make this shit up. There was an LA Times article that came out a little while ago against us and a bunch of the top brands in the space. Total bullshit, by the way. We were the only brand that spoke up and we immediately opened our doors and invited strangers to come and test stuff off our shelves. You can see it below in our, on my highlights. We immediately got, we immediately got a recall, right? Which is pretty funny and what a coincidence. It's from the same LA Times article from, with the same product from nine months ago from the same disgruntled labs. Fast forward to today, we put out a press release less than one hour after the press release, right? There was an article by MJ Biz put out and we read it and it's saying that there's five recalls from us, which is news to us. So we, cause we don't know about it. We called the DCC immediately and said, is there a recall? They said, yes. We said, oh yeah. Well, is this public uh, record or is it public knowledge? And like, have you, you haven't told us yet. And they said, oh yeah, it's against our policy. We would, we would, uh, we would put it on our website and notify the operators first. But somehow it's already published on MJ Biz. Now there's just way too many coincidences. I'm not sure if it's the Chads trying to take take the culture out and take us op, uh, legacy operators out, or if it's the media trying to look for a clickbait, if it's the DCC put out a video, and what do you know? Our retailers start getting the recall email. Crazy coincidence, I know. But let me break it down for y'all. There's an article that comes out with the only brand that fires back. Boom, we're the only brand that gets a recall. We're the only brand that puts out a press release. Boom, we're the only brand that gets five more recalls. Well, listen, we're just getting started. Now I'm about to go do a podcast, tell my story, and tell y'all more stuff like this bullshit class action that was filed the same day as the article. And honestly, now that I think about it, we haven't even been served from the class action lawsuit yet. And the only way we even knew about it was from some, some reporter, from some article. It's just so many coincidences. How do they seem to always know everything before everybody else? And listen, after this video comes out, I'm assuming they're going to drop some more recalls. I got some thinking to do. Don't drink a dry smoke fly. Oh boy oh boy oh boy oh boy i'm really excited to roll into the rest of my story you guys what a uh Oh man. All right. California regulators on Tuesday announced five more marijuana product recalls related to banned pesticides in a scandal that has rocked the market for the past month. According to Department of Cannabis Control, DCC, the recalled products were all vape oil cartridges and pens produced by West Coast Cure, one of the state's top selling brands with distribution in hundreds of stores. Today's recall is part of the department's ongoing efforts to remove products from the marketplace that contain pesticide. DCC spokesperson David Hafner confirmed to MJ Biz Daily via email. Ah, <sighs> Kalenifera spurred, well, that's wrong. Recall the following WCC products are recalled. Birthday cake, one gram cure pen. Lemon cooler, one gram cure pen. Lucky Charms, one gram cure pen. Sil Slimer, one gram live resin cartridge. Watermelon sorbet, one gram cure pen. Hafner said the products all contained a banned greenhouse pesticide typically sprayed directly on leaves to combat caterpillars, fungus gnats, mites, and other pests. That tells you this is growing outside. Four of the five products also were highlighted for containing banned pesticides in a June report by the Los Angeles Times in a Weed Week that detailed the presence of pesticides across a spectrum of products for sale in the world's largest regulated cannabis market. The resulting fallout has cast a shadow over testing labs, their procedures and test validity while pitting retailers against brands as regulators try to identify the source of contamination, a difficult task considering the many points of contact for any given product. Meanwhile, the controversy has left cannabis brands, retailers, and testing labs scrambling to regain the confidence of consumers. West Coast Cure responds in a Tuesday news release. West Coast Cure reiterated that its dedication to testing and quality control standards, adding that it invested nearly one million in testing last year. The brand said every West Coast Cure product on retail shelves has passed compliance testing by state licensed laboratories. The company also said it initiates quality control testing with labs before production and packaging. 
At the end of the day, West Coast Cure is not a testing laboratory, nor are we permitted to be one by California regulations, the release noted. Meanwhile, the Orange County-based company criticized regulators and the perceived lack of standardized testing procedures. The state has established proficiency testing standards that do not mirror the standards that, we are, that are established for compliance tests, West Coast Cure said. And Resco Laboratories and Infinite Chemical Analysis Labs last week filed a class action lawsuit against 13 testing labs, according to the Times, claiming they inflated potency or disregarded the presence of certain contaminants in certificate of analysis, COAs. Regulators increase enforcement. The DCC on June 25th issued a mandatory recall for one gram cure pen vape cartridge from West Coast Cure. The Cannabis Regulatory Agency has been ramping up enforcement and product recalls this year. The agency already has issued 28 product recalls in 2024, widely surpassing the three recalls per year issued in 2023 and 2022. The DCC told MJ Biz Daily it now has the capability to test concentrates for pesticides through state labs. The agency is quickly utilizing this new capability as evidenced by the five recalls today and the recall last week, Hafner said. Oh man, oh man, this is giving who done it, Spider-Man. They're all pointing at each other. This is crazy. I you know, I appreciate I appreciate Jay Cures at responding. I think you have to. I think he did a great job of reading a statement. Um, but also, like, acknowledge you haven't been served by the lawsuit because you're not sued in it. It's labs suing other labs. And the fact that test results are being sold is not a surprise to anyone. We all know this. We know that there's a absolute cap that is possible on THC potency. And I've seen some lab tests that are well above that. And as much as it's great for your marketing, it's bad for the consumer because we're lying to them. I mean, there are a lot of things that can happen. And yes, you know, let's, we invested a million dollars in testing because you fucking have to. That's part of standard operating procedure. You have to have these products tested. And yes, it kind of gets expensive as you continue to do batch after batch. Yes, you should test before you fill your carts. The last thing you want to do is fill a bunch of equipment with some shit that's hot filled and then you lost all your equipment as well. That's a huge loss for the company. Like these things are, are absolute standard. And I just think, um, you know, we'll, we'll see who's telling the truth. I think we need to make sure that we're acknowledging that there are standards for how samples are collected for, you know, the testing labs have to come in and select the compliance tested material. It's not like you get to give them the good ones, which has happened in some states like Colorado at times and others. And, you know, um, they pick what they want at random. They take it. It's quarantine. Chain of custody is very important. Um, and, you know, having independent people come into your facility, grab things off the shelf and test them is just, that's a question practice for me because you shouldn't be allowing anyone who's not an employee access to your secured area which your product storage should in fact be so you know we'll we'll see what happens if if they're innocent you know prove them innocent if they're not continue to protect the consumer because you know we're in retail it's a scary thing when your customers are coming in and they're saying hey we want to buy this but we don't know if it's safe you have a right to know what you're putting in your body and some things that maybe go on foods you're not you're not combusting that so we need to make sure that we're following these standards. What do you think, Jace? Well, I mean, first of all, I think the state is kind of gaslighting the public in this when they highlight the fact that they only had three recalls this year and 28 this year because they did change a lot of the tester testing standards as well as the certification on labs that only certain ones are able to test going forward because the, I feel this the, one of the reasons that they only had so many recalls that year <clears throat> is because the state wasn't focused on enforcing any type of enforcement on any of the labs and just letting the labs do whatever they do such as the inflated test results that you mentioned i agree how great is yeah, that? i think i, I think I, we I, need to differentiate between inflated test results which harm the consumer in their pocketbook well versus dirty testing where you have an unsafe well product. They, they, they've changed they, they've changed a lot of the a lot of the testing protocols which which were allowing for a i would say a, a more thorough test now yarrow and so i was alluding to that and just making it more understandable in regards with the pesticides. The, the other thing that's worth noting is didn't the state finance a testing lab an independent testing lab to the tune of like i want to say $11 million. nine million dollars this 11 11 11 million dollars and and i don't even think that lab is up and running so what comes to mind for me is how do you protect the consumer if you can't even stand up your own lab mm -hmm. and if you know labs have been 
decrying the lack of standardization in this industry in California for a really long time. And 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 so it's challenging because the the best the best thing about regulated cannabis is the theory that the supply chain is protected and that it provides the consumer with a greater uh, uh, level of product safety. That is, to me, the really the the foundation of why a regulated industry should exist. When you take that away or the consumer's not confident that those protections are in place, then what are we doing here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I agree with you, Yara. I think we we need a... Oh, sorry, go ahead, Dale. This is going to be the Lawyer's Full Employment Act. I've written these contracts between B2B, okay? And if you have a product recall, we like to put into these contracts who's responsible for it. But if you're a retailer, you just dumped hundreds of thousands of dollars into product. You paid for it. It's on your shelves. and It's got to be taken off your shelf, and you can't sell it. Now, is is this company, which is not saying these Schedule One pesticides were not there. You didn't hear that come out of their mouth, okay? Um, somehow, there are prohibited pesticides on this product. They don't spray that in um, when they're processing or when they're manufacturing. They're, you know, this comes from the grower. And if this got into the system and got all the way to a retail shelf with a prohibited substance on it, with all this testing, it just tells me this is nothing but a 360 degree shit show. And it took the DCC how long to figure out there's prohibited pesticides on products and retail shelves? Mm -hmm. uh, lawyers are going to love this because and insurance companies have a lot more power now than the DCC does. I, I, I you know, you, you bring up a, you bring up a super can. interesting point, Dale. And, and, and while we're on this before before we go to you, so um, it, how much liability does the state have? Because if I'm a consumer and I purchase some of these products and I develop some type of thing, uh, my, my first thought is, is I should be able to sue the state because the state <laughs> said the state originally said that this was clean and clear product based on, based by the standards of which they are regulating. Yeah. They're yep. getting sued. Yep. Just they're getting sued. It'd, it'd be no different than the FDA approving a drug that wasn't safe or allowing an automotive manufacturer to go to market. Well, well the, F, the FDA is immune from a lot of drugs that they produce that have proven to not be safe. I mean, so I that's why I wonder this. I think if the initial test results that were given back inaccurate or, or not were under those levels that were required by the state, I think that would probably make the state not at fault. It would come back and the onus would be on the lab to who the provided lab. fault. Right. Yeah. In front of there's still going to get brought to the party. Someone's going to cross complain against them. Everybody that would touch this product uh, from the retail mm -hmm. store back to the cultivator is going to be in these lawsuits. I'd file cross complaints against anybody. And then what's going to come out if people will honestly, you know, pony up to what they did is that there were backroom deals done here that are basically fraud. Um, and insurance companies don't pay for that kind of intentional conduct. That's why I'm saying insurance companies are going to have a lot more power here than the state does because they they might reserve their right to pay this and say, we're going to do some investigation. If someone committed fraud here, that's outside our insurance policy, and we ain't covering it. We're going to yeah, and insur out. insurance investigators are if anyone's going to get to the bottom of something, it's a, it's a goddamn insurance investigator. Right. What I was going to say before, though, is I think – I think there needs to be a, a wider paradigm cultural shift when it comes to testing within the cannabis industry. So so much of it is driven by getting product to the shelf, what's going to be most appealing to the consumer, and not about consistency, not about quality control or quality assurance. I mean, if you look at other producers of any type of product, whether it's edible, consumable, some type of consumer good, these companies invest heavily in internal testing infrastructure so that they can be testing their product throughout their supply chain. So by the time it gets to the lab for their regulatory test, it's nothing more than a formality. They already know what's going to happen. They're not risking huge batches of product on whatever inconsistency there might be in standardization of, of lab protocol. 100%. And, it is so, and, and unfortunately, unfortunately, part of the way this is going to happen is that Regulatory bodies like the DCC and in California, the DPR, the Department of Pesticides Regulation, mm -hmm. need to have a, a heavier hand when it comes to enforcement to make it clear that this product cannot make it to market. And as a business, especially as a larger operator, 
you're better off investing in having that infrastructure in-house to to conduct your own testing throughout your supply chain so you're not risking large batches of product having that happen. I mean, I think we've put that equipment in every facility I built out, right? And it, there are a couple issues there, but I think, Soham, I agree with you. Um, it's You need a very, 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 very skilled technician to operate those very, 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 very sensitive pieces of equipment. So we don't operate on those or absolutes, right? But it is very important and it is worth the investment to not have those surprises. And I also think, you know, when we're sending it out for compliance testing, listen, we've seen all kinds of stuff happen in this industry. People get a clean compliance sample back and then they want to go and switch those out with things that are filled with something that they may have gotten that's not regulated or some conversions or whatever you're trying to finagle the bagel with today. I think it comes down to we just need to be more concerned with is this product safe? Can we guarantee that our consumers are safe? Then who's picking on me today? Yeah, I think it's both, right? And part of, like, I agree with you wholeheartedly. And I think the way that we're going to have that shift from the cultural perspective of operators is for it to be very expensive for if you have contaminated batches making it to market that is what's going to push operators to invest more heavily in hiring a real lab director for their internal testing to make sure that their qc and qa sops are are very robust and making sure that that contaminated product doesn't make it to market yeah and there's yeah. only because that's how that's how it works everywhere else right no 100 yeah. percent. We're, 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 we're way 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 over time could we, we wrap this one yeah, yeah. oh yeah, it's 10 35. All right. So, yeah. Big ups to everybody. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Hide Nine News. You can catch us live weekdays, 9 a.m. Pacific, high noon on the East Coast. It's a very, very lively conversation and very, very important topics. I didn't mean to cut it too short there, but um, we are like 35 minutes over. Um, big shout out to Super Fan Show and Love. Do we have any today, Jason? Um, I don't th mm -hmm. think so. I don't know. I don't see. Not I don't see. Fuck, man. Y'all yeah. make it Jason go. They don't want me to have this no like Ragu, bro. No, no, okay, no. Y'all give us much food. No, I guess. I guess. You. I guess everyone's everyone's a vegan in the chat today. Oh, offensive. I guess so, man. Like, no, no glizzies for y'all. Vegan There's vegan glizzies too. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> <laughs> vegan glizzies are delicious. <laughs>